Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? I have this impulsive last minute Christmas gift for my little friend Leo. Every time he's in the bathroom, he needs to call for help because he's not tall enough to reach the bathroom faucet. So I'm gonna make him a little stool out of cherry. So let's get started. This is a piece of six quarter cherry and I'm gonna cut a piece that's long enough to make the top of the stool and the two legs. And then I'll run it through the jointer to get a straight edge and a straight face. And then I'll run it through the planer. There's no particular thickness that I'm shooting for, so I'll just plane it down until it's flat on the top. With the jointed side running along the fence, I'll cut the other side so that it's parallel. Again, there's no particular size that I'm shooting for, I'm just cutting it to be as wide as I can. I'll cut the two legs off and then the remaining piece will be the top. Next I'll use the CNC router just to add a little bit of design to the two legs. I'm going to attach the two legs to the top with a sliding dovetail joint. So I'm using my dovetail router bit to cut the dovetail slots on the bottom side of the top. I have a piece of wood clamped at the back to prevent any tear out on the back side, but it looks like I should have used one on the front as well. I was not expecting any tear out on the front. It's not a big deal though, because I can just run it through the table saw one more time to make the top a little bit narrower. Next I'll make the male portion of the dovetail joint on the tops of each of the two legs and I'm just going to sneak up on the fit. I would have completed this project in a single evening, except I decided to inlay his name in the top using a walnut inlay. So this will be a two evening project because of the glue up. 
for the male portion of the inlay, as soon as I saw how the CNC was carving the O, I realized that I had done it incorrectly and it was just doing a mirror image of the female portion of the inlay. So I stopped the CNC, flipped the board over, reprogrammed it and tried again. A stool is a pretty practical gift, and I know how kids react to practical gifts, especially at Christmas time. I don't think I can compete with the toys. So we'll see how he reacts to this one. Next I'm going to cut this cross piece that's going to join the two legs together and it's going to have a through tenon in each end and loose wedges that will hold it securely. The idea is that this stool can be disassembled so that's why it has a sliding dovetail joint and the through tenons with the wedges, the wedges can be removed and the stool can be taken apart. It can be folded up in a suitcase and taken on a trip. Next I'll use a half inch mortising bit to cut the mortises in the through tenons and this is where the wedges are going to fit into to hold everything securely. I'm cutting the mortises before I trim it down for the tenon, that way when I trim it down for the tenon it will remove any of the tear out. Now I'll use my tenoning jig to cut the tenon part and I'll just sneak up on the fit by testing the fit each time I make a cut.
After doing the test fit, then I'll cut the shoulder of the tenon. Next, using a piece of walnut that's left over from that inlay, I will just freehand cut a couple of wedges. I'll smooth the wedges on the belt sander and then round over everything with a quarter inch round over bit. and I'll apply a coat of Odie's oil on all the pieces, and this will actually help the sliding dovetail joint to slide easily. And then using the six pieces that the CNC cut, I'm gonna write a clue for Leo so he can read this and figure out where his gift is. I'm putting English on one side because he speaks French also, and I'm gonna write French on the other side in red. It has some clues on it. Or what? It has, well, you have to read it. It has English on one side and French on the other side. So which, which language do you want to try to read? Mm, French. French, okay. Is French black? French is red. So there are numbers. Which one is the first and word? And what are these clues? Are they clues to get yeah, something? Clue. Yeah. Yes. Number two. You have to figure out that. Where's the number one? Clue. So that's the second one. This is like a puzzle. Can you find this first one? Number four. Okay. So put it after number two and leave a little space. Number one. Number one? Put it here. It's like a sentence, right? One, two, three, four. Five. Five? So why do you erase? Yeah, put the French on and the English on the same. Yep. Six. Okay, now let's try to read this. Two. Mm -hmm. Two. Sha. It's a hard C. K. 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 D. Et on a vu, ça fait le son. O. O. Donc ça fait ça. Et après, c'est bon. Ka. Ka. Do. Ka. Do. Ka. Do. Ok, donc. Ton. Ton. Ka. 
Okay. So now read it all together. L'atelier. Do you know what a atelier is? Read the English side. Turn it around and you can read the English side. That gives you a clue. Oh, yeah, work, work, show, workshop, workshop. workshop. Ton cadeau est dans le workshop. <laughs> we gotta go to the workshop and find it. I'll tell you, if he was 14, he would be disappointed when he opens this. <laughs> it looks like a gaming laptop. It's a box. Why could it be? It looks fancy. Mike, are you just giving me wood? <laughs> it's special wood. You're going to have to put it together. There's special grooves here. But you gotta figure out how to put it together. Hmm, maybe upside. Yep. Okay, look at the top. Yep. That was smart. Yeah. Oh, maybe not that much. Well, let's... That's right, that goes in there. But maybe you should look at all the pieces before you put it together. <laughs> you uh -huh. it first? Do you think we're gonna be blocked? That's like a, a puzzle. Uh huh. That's kind of tricky. So, yep. Okay. Your other hand at the bottom to guide it. See? You guide it with your hand at the bottom. But now, okay. hmm, how are you gonna get that piece in? Ah, uh, uh, we won't be able to do it now. Maybe. Oh, oh, don't force. Think, think. Maybe we put it not in this order. That's it. Now, how are we going to get that middle piece in? I don't know what those pieces are for. Oh, I think I know. Okay. So, how can you put this? Is it too late now, maybe, to put it? Because they're stuck. So, do we have to put it before? So, what do you think? Maybe we have to put it before we slide them into. Yep. I don't have enough hands. No, just remove it completely. And you, we don't need those little. You can, you can put those pins down, those wedges. Oh, we told us what it's for. Pins. Oh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Put that middle piece. On the other side. Okay, now it goes really easy. Now we can maybe slide it. Do you, do you need help for, the, for guiding it with my finger? You do one side, I do one side, okay? And now let's push it. And the same one, two, three. Perfect. Okay, so what are those little pins for? Yeah, because why don't we make it? 
I see a hole here. <clears throat> what are we making? Uh, do they go here, Mike? They do go there. <clears throat> but if you put it this way, it's really not doing anything. If you turn it this way, then it's going to push against this wood and hold it. You just squeeze it tightly. <clears throat> so what did we make? I don't know. What is this? Maybe it's upside down. What does it say? Leo D. Leo D. So I know it's for you. And you know sometimes when you're in the bathroom and you want to wash your hands and you can't reach the faucet, you need something to stand on, right? Dude. Does it work? Can you stand on it? Is it strong enough to hold you? It's good, tall. good job. You're tall enough now to reach the faucet. Yeah, I know, it's not a great present. Handmade by Mike with a name and grief. Ugh. So what do you say? Thank you, Mike. Oh, you're welcome. So I gotta ask, would you make it?